Okay, so we are to lesson 5.2. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about congruent polygons. So we have talked about the idea of congruence since the beginning of the year. And congruent just means the same measure. So angles that are congruent are both the same degree measure. Segments that are, this are congruent are the same length. Congruent polygons are polygons that are the same size and same shape, meaning all of their corresponding angles are congruent and all of their corresponding sides are congruent. So when I talk about corresponding parts, I am actually talking about angles that correspond and sides that correspond. So in this first kind of diagram I show you, A corresponds to D, they're the same measure. B corresponds to E, they're the same measure. C corresponds to F, they're the same measure. So if I'm naming these triangles, or if I'm making what's called a congruence statement, I would say that triangle ABC is congruent, using that congruence notation there, that is congruent to DEF, triangle DEF. So the way I do that is, since angle A is congruent to D, they both come first. B is congruent to E, so they both come second. C is congruent to F, so they both come third. So we are going to get some practice identifying corresponding parts. So in this example here, writing a congruent statement and identifying the corresponding parts. So let's just first identify the corresponding angles. So I'm going to start with, let's just start with angle J. Angle J is congruent to angle T. Now you might think angle R because they're both on top, but you got to look closely at the markings. J has two markings, T has two markings. That makes them congruent. So since L has one marking, that means it is congruent to angle R, since it also has one marking. And then all that's left is angle K being congruent to angle S. So corresponding angles are angles that are marked as congruent, having the same measure, okay? Corresponding sides. Now here is important. You gotta look at the sides with one marking, but you also have to write the sides in a certain order. So with J, if I write the first side as JK, JK goes from J to K, so the congruent segment would be, or side would be T, S. And the reason that is is because J and T are congruent and K and S are congruent. So that order does matter. For the next one, if I go KL, I would say KL is congruent to SR. Because they both have that double marking, K is congruent to S, L is congruent to R. And then finally, the last one, if I go JL, I would have to say JL is congruent to TR. So that's important. The order is important. So you got to make sure you're understanding which side corresponds to which side and the order you write them in. So for me to write a congruence statement, what that is, is me saying triangle. I'll say JKL is congruent, and I've just got to write it in that same corresponding order. So J corresponds to T, K corresponds to S, and L corresponds to R. So that's how I write that, and the ordering does very much matter when we write our congruence statement. So that's what this is. Saying the triangles are congruent and how they're congruent, that's a congruence statement. So in the next example, we're going to use properties of congruence to solve different types of equations. So we're given our congruence statement, DEFG is congruent to SPQR. So if I'm going to find the value of x, I'm going to look, I have 6y plus x, and I have 2x minus 4. So I'm going to think the equation I want to use, I'm going to use an equation using 2x minus 4. Okay. So if I look at that, that is segment QR. So I've got to figure out which segment is congruent in the other shape to QR. 
and you look at your congruent statement, QR are the last two letters. In our congruent statement, FG are the last two letters. So QR is congruent to FG. And all I do to set up my equation, FG is 12 feet. So my equation, QR, the expression is 2x minus 4. FG is 12. So I just set them equal to each other. They are equal measures because they are congruent. So this is the equation. And then I just have to solve. 2x equals 16. x is 8. Now the reason I solve for x first is because me solving for y requires me to know what x is. So in this part, to so find the value of y, this expression 6y plus x is really angle q. Now in our congruent statement, q is third, f is third, meaning q and f are congruent. So the equation I write is 6y plus x equals angle F, which is 68. 68. And I know what X is. We just solve for it. X is 8. So 6y plus 8 equals 68. And all I have to do is solve. Subtract 8 from both sides. 6y equals 60. Divide both sides by 6. Y is 10. So it's important to know which variable is easier to solve for first, and then use that information to keep piecing together that puzzle. So in this next example, I'm going to talk about how to show f that figures are congruent. So we're going to use some concepts that we have talked about before to show that these figures are congruent. So to show that PTS is congruent to RTQ, I've got to show that angle, oops, angle P is congruent to angle R. If you look at angle P and angle R, we've got to notice something. If we look at this, I'm going to be doing some drawing here, these lines are parallel, these segments are parallel, and it's got a transversal. So P and R are actually congruent because they are, this goes back a ways, alternate interior angles. That's how I can say P, P and R are congruent to each other, because they're alternate interior angles, because of those parallel lines. Okay. The next set of angles I'm going to talk about, T and T. I mean, T is really this angle T and this angle T. So I would really say T is congruent to T, because those are vertical to each other. Those are vertical angles. They're just across from each other, resulting from two um, intersecting lines. And then the final two, S and Q, angle S is congruent to angle Q. And the reason those are congruent is the same reason P and R were congruent. Those are also alternate interior angles. Okay. So the main thing there is to know how to show angles are congruent when they're not necessarily marked, okay? So all that's left is to show which um, sides are congruent. So sides are already marked, so this is actually, I think, the easy part. I would say PS is congruent to RQ. They're marked, all right? And P and R, Q and S match up. Um, I'd say PT and RT are congruent because they have the same marking. And then finally, ST and QT are congruent because they have the same marking. So the sides were already marked. The angles we had to use some review to figure out what um, was going on with those. So right now, I'm going to give you a little practice for this, these first three examples, and then you're going to move on, and then I'm going to have you finish the notes by um, doing the next example and some guided practice. Okay, so I know I'm cutting the video off a little bit, but this video is getting up to around 10 minutes. I want to split that up so this video doesn't end up being 16, 17 minutes long. 
So you can move on to a little mini practice and then come back to these notes once you are done with that mini practice.